All right, Anthony on Air Podcast back for another episode. Jay Sams is here with us, and we're talking about Carol Baskin, future Dancing with the Stars star. <laughs> um, rumors about her husband disappearing. There's now a new, uh, there's some new allegations coming to light that her husband who disappeared, his handyman, helped Carol Baskin get rid of his body. And this is according to the handyman's wife who's coming forward and speaking for the first time ever. So we'll talk about that. Odell Beckham has a weird kink, which we will get into. The skies of San Francisco are ridiculous because of wildfires and the Kardashians are giving up their show. So uh, it is 2020. And the thing I felt like got us through the first couple of uh, months of 2020 was Tiger King. Everybody was talking about it. And then I I was like, hey, I don't think we're ever going to talk about this again. But now that Carol Baskin's going on Dancing with the Stars, she's sort of popping up again. And there's going to be one of these 48 hour specials that are going to focus solely on the disappearance of her first husband, Don Lewis. So Don Lewis had a ton of money. This was a part of the uh, Tiger King documentary. I'll catch you guys up if you don't know about it. He had a ton of money. He randomly disappears one day. The day after... He would be like he was missing for five years and whatever the law is in Florida, the day after he would be considered legally dead. Carol Baskin came forward with his will. It was like, okay, I'll I'll take his money now. And that's basically what she did. So, yeah. So this guy, Kenny Farr, was the handyman helper for Don Lewis, Carol Baskin's husband who disappeared. Now, Kenny Farr's ex-wife is finally speaking up. Because that she says that she's afraid her husband might have been a part of getting rid of Don Lewis's body. Oh, my God. She says a couple of interesting things here, which is a little crazy. Um, she also said that she didn't speak up. You Because people might think right away, well, why didn't she talk prior to this? Well, she was afraid for her life and for her children's life. But she jumped in on this 48 hours uh, interview that uh, CBS is putting on and it'll be on tonight, I believe, September 9th at the time of our podcast here. And so this is what she says. She said that one point, two days before Lewis was reported missing, her husband Kenny came home and said, Don's gone. I don't want you talking about him anymore. It was around that time that he brought a large freezer home and put it on their porch with a padlock on it (laughs) who padlocks a freezer right people who kill people (laughs) yeah that's who does it like all right we grew up in queens we we've never like i you know no first of all there's rarely a porch in queens we don't have porches we have stoops that's first of all you can't you can't fit a freezer on a stoop uh but i'm sure there's parts of the country that probably have freezers in and around their house maybe there's hunters and you know you kill a buck you kill a deer there's plenty of meat you got to throw it in the freezer i know joe rogan loves to shoot his elk and you know one elk is like 500 pounds of meat or some crazy like that so he's got a free but out on the porch with a padlock do you have to padlock your freezer i mean maybe certain parts of ozone park (laughs) that are left unsaid (laughs) I, I, this, I mean, this seems like crazy to me. So here's how it breaks down. Um, Don disappeared. Then the freezer appears. Then shortly after it's reported that he disappeared, the freezer disappears. She says about a week after Don's disappearance, the freezer was moved. According to the Tampa Bay times, uh, far pain. This is the wife ex-wife told cops back in 2000 that she believed her husband was involved in the Lewis disappearance. She says that on the weekend on a, on the weekend in 1997, when Lewis disappeared far stayed home from work when he normally would be at the animal park seven days a week. So usually he's always there working. Now he decides to stay at home. She said she, she said that he received a call before 1 PM uh, and left with a man. She also believed did work for Lewis and returned alone Sunday night. Uh, a little before midnight, driving Lewis's van. 
Farpain also claimed that he backed up the van to the house, and when he opened the door, there were pistols and rifles inside. Oh, come on. She says he left the next day in Lewis's van and returned in his own flatbed truck. Baskin claims she gave Far the guns long after Lewis disappeared. On one instance, she alleges he told her that if she left him, she'd end up in the grinder like Don did. Ooh. Right? Now, like you, now, now, you know when you get into like a heated argument or a debate or a fight with your husband or wife and you, you, you get all the things that you don't really want to say, like all that you're stuff. gonna end up in a freezer yeah like all that stuff goes away like you ever talking to your your significant other they're annoying you and you want to say something to piss them off but you hold back you don't say it but in the heat right. of the moment of an argument those things tend to come out you know oh. kind of sounds like that's what that was right there uh according to court records baskin and far transferred a half a dozen properties back and forth starting uh a month after lewis's disappearance uh, Far denied knowing anything about knowing anything about what happened to Lewis on Tiger King series. Uh, Tiger King director Rebecca Chaklin said she was told by a former detective on the case that he had been given a lie detector test and that showed he was not being decept deceptive. Lewis's remains have never been found and there's been no criminal charges. Lewis, who started the Animal Sanctuary, which later became Big Cat Rescue in Florida with Carol Baskin, vanished a day before a scheduled trip to Costa Rica. Far Payne's claim okay. that Lewis may have been in the freezer are in contrast to allegations made by Joe Exotic, who said that Carol Baskin fed the husband to a tiger that she was keeping in the park. I 150% believe that. That she fed there's, that she fed him to a tiger? There's no doubt in my mind. Cause she, she is batshit crazy. <laughs> she, Cause it's her eyes. Isn't it her eyes? Like her eyes are like. It's the fact that she wears animal print every single day. I mean, I do too. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know Carol Baskin's crazy because I am also crazy in the animal exactly. print. Exactly. <laughs> so no, Don Lewis's family is now offering a hundred thousand dollar reward for anyone with information about what happened to him. Um, and they're also. Uh, targeting Farr, who appeared briefly in Tiger King, and a woman who witnessed the signing of Lewis's will. So, Susan A. Bradshaw supposedly witnessed Don Lewis signing his will. She told the Tampa Bay Times in 2005 that Baskin told her to say she was there for the will signing. However, she claims that she was not. Farr had been accused by Lewis's assistant, Anne McQueen, of helping Baskin to remove documents and dismantle his office just days after his disappearance. Hmm. Yep. She killed him. Shortly after the disappearance, Baskin, uh, his wife at the time and last known person to see him alive, produced his will and power of attorney that gave her complete control of his $5 million estate. Lewis's former attorney had previously claimed that his client's signature was forged on two documents that effectively surrendered his fortune to the Tiger King star after he vanished. Hillsborough County Sheriff Chad Cronister confirmed in June that experts had determined that his will was 100% a forgery, although no culprit was named. Oh, Despite Baskin's denials, the case quickly became one of the most discussed parts of the Tiger King show. Other conspiracy theories include that uh, Carol Baskin buried his body under a septic tank, Don's plane crashed on its way to Costa Rica, or Don flew to Costa Rica and is living in secrecy. I would like to do that. Live in secrecy? <laughs> Who wouldn't? In Costa Rica. <laughs> Just to get out of our group friend text. <laughs> Is anybody else's group group friend chat or family chat just turning 100% politically annoying slash and or school issue annoying? Because that's what ours has really turned into. Oh, I don't think it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't think it's annoying. I just think it's a group text. It should be fun, right? Shouldn't group text be fun? Like that's a place where you put goofy things and memes and shit like that. It's like 
make group text friend. Wait, make group text great again. <laughs> make it Yeah, uh, make it <laughs> um, Supposedly, Don Lewis's family is also going to sue, but they're trying to settle this all civilly as of right now. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. What do you think? Freezer, padlock freezer on the porch, truck full of guns, 100% forged, the uh, will. I think they they probably cut him up into pieces and then fed it to the lion. Probably, right? Because if they fed it to a lion, that doesn't mean like he the lions don't eat bones. Like wouldn't there be bones? I don't know. I mean, I would guess. So you probably throw the bones in the freezer, keep those for a couple of days before you can get rid of them so they don't go stinking it up. Right. These are just guesses. I've never actually done this before. but Me, me too. <laughs> I mean, but there's guns in the house. Like, like when you're running an animal sanctuary, there's plenty of things around to kill somebody with. It's true. You know? Just like that one guy in the documentary. Didn't he kill himself on video? Yeah. With a gun? In the middle of the office? Without even throwing a spoiler alert out there. Way to go, no. Janine. I mean, Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> so uh, this 48 Hours is going to be on CBS this evening, shortly after our podcast comes out. And uh, I think it might be the uh, talk of the town, you know. I think so. The next couple of days. Um, if anybody wants a, a break from politics, that's basically all there is to talk about. So uh, Odell Beckham Jr., who is a former Giants uh, wide receiver, now plays for the Cleveland Browns. The I knew Browns. that. Yeah. He has a weird kink. Uh, supposedly, he likes to get uh, a little Cleveland Brown on his chest during... Uh... <laughs> I, I don't know what to think of this, because this comes from a, another podcast called Thoughts Next Door, which is part of the No Jumper podcast network. I, I don't know too much about this no jumper guy. I I know very little, but I think he's like a skateboarder artist okay. slash porn star. Like I think he does porn and podcasts. I've only full disclosure ever seen one of his podcast episodes with Casey Neistat. I was the only thing I've ever, it's the only time I've ever seen this guy, but with little research I did before our episode here, uh, was that like I guess so he he's grown in popularity over three million subscribers on face on uh, YouTube so it's a big podcast um, and I think he's spinning off other shows and one of those shows is Thoughts Next Door where a young lady uh, went on and said that she was with Odell Beckham and he likes to get I, I I'm gonna play the clip here I love the way she says it. So they broached the subject like um, so one of the girls says, I want you to talk about that basketball player. And she goes, oh, no, you mean the football player? And we pick it up from here. I got Frank Internet all of a sudden. Who likes to get shit on? Yeah. Who oh. likes to get shit on in the industry? We mm -hmm. want to know. An A-list football player. Is that a thing? Yes. <laughs> but he said no. He's not ready. Fuck that. Go. Are they ready for this? He said, yeah, 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 go, baby. What? You you can't, you gotta oh, deal with You can keep it. Oh! Oh, I'll tell y'all the story. Oh, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> we're we're <laughs> avoiding loss. So, again, like, this is like the start of this podcast is, is awful, by the way. I've watched 11 minutes <laughs> of it. It's, it's terrible. I have to watch it now. It's really, really bad. Um, and it's not as bad as the Michelle Obama podcast, but it's close. <laughs> At least Michelle Obama. Or as bad as Anthony on air. <laughs> At least Michelle Obama is well spoken. I've I've become a bit of a podcast snob. I, I tried the Michelle Obama podcast and within four seconds of the podcast, she was done. she was saying something and then they brought in sweeping weird music, which played for like 20 seconds. And then they faded the music down and she started saying something else. And I just, I lost it. I'm like, why, why would they like, I, either you can do this or you can't. And I understand that there are those podcasts that are edited heavily, but I don't want to like hear this one. 20. <laughs> I believe me, I would not put in the effort of editing this, but I, I, I would not like, I hate when people edit in like 20 minutes of spa music, you know, in the I hate that crap. I can't stand it. 
after that, the conversation was pretty okay between Michelle Obama and, and Barack Obama. It was it was relatively fascinating. But I thought it would be a little bit better, husband and wife getting together on a podcast. Like you got to give me give me a little something there. Give me something the give me something juicy, steamy. There was nothing. Anyway, we continue. Speaking of steamy. <laughs> Okay. Yes, he loves Tell to be you. shitted on. Ooh. <laughs> I just love the way he loves to be shitted on. I don't think that's the proper way to say that. Is that is that really? Um, it's probably shat on. <laughs> so I'm going to spare everybody from playing any more of this. And um, I just don't. I also I don't want to be rude or anything, but I, Odell Beckham Jr. is a it's a he's a superstar in the NFL. Is that is that young lady good looking enough to to draw a superstar? No. Unless she agreed to that. Maybe they're slim pickings when it comes to somebody. Let me tell you something about that yeah. subject. I worked with someone. Who would always, yeah, I know, I know. You have such a sketchy work past. Go ahead. (laughs) Always make it a point to mention that, like, joking around. Really? And, yeah, it was almost to the point where I was like, you said that too much. I think you would like that. You know what I mean? Now, it's funny that you said that because even in our own group of friends, there has been a consistent joke that has come up that I mentioned to you, right? Wait, which one? So, uh, you doing my mom? <laughs> no. <laughs> which, which one? <laughs> I realize though that that actually damages the point I'm about to make. Um, the because we were, remember we were talking about who were we talking about that was a cuckold? Now I can't remember. Oh, oh the, I know who. The the pastor guy and his wife. Yes. And I said, I think we have one amongst us and our friends. And they, he keeps making the same jokes. This is the same that you said. And, and, and by the way, making the joke out of the blue, like nobody's talking about this and he's making the joke. So anyway, go yes. ahead. You just So that's exactly the same thing, like with this person I used to work with. Okay. Now, was it a male or female? It was a male. It was a male. Now, were his jokes about him doing it to others or others doing it to him? Is what I'm fascinated by. <laughs> I wouldn't have to say it. It wasn't actually like a girl doing that on him. Uh huh. He would say, <laughs> I hope he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> he would want to be under a clear glass um, table. Yeah. Laying down. Right. And the girl would make a duty on the table. On the table. He would like want to watch it. He want to play totem yes. pole. Yeah. But he didn't just make the joke once, five, ten times. I heard it maybe 50 times or more. <sighs> so, like, Again. is it a thing in a movie that I just didn't get? Or does he really want to do this? Again, I I feel like I keep repeating myself and I feel like every time we talk about these things, I feel like the most boring sexual person on the planet because I don't have (laughs) any of these things. I don't understand why anybody would want to watch somebody else bang their wife. I don't understand why anybody (laughs) would want to involve feces. No, like I don't I don't get I don't get any of this. I don't get any of it. Well, it's funny because like once I mentioned like you always say that joke and he was like oh no not for me and i'm like okay dude yeah god i hope he doesn't watch this <laughs> and i get a text <laughs> you promise you wouldn't tell everyone what you did oops <laughs> that's weird so he but how would he make the joke like oh i'd let her i'd want to watch her like if somebody hot was walking by would he be like oh i want to watch her yes like there's like stupid things like uh, right like you said like a, a girl or yeah i heard that's what he wants to do or maybe she wants to do that come on you ain't fooling anyone that's so you want to be underneath that glass table okay that's a weird one Ugh. so this girl in this podcast also said that odell asked her to send a video of her dropping a deuce 
Oh God. He was like, I can't even duty where I work. Imagine someone <laughs> asked me to do this. No joke. <laughs> I know it's the, it's the, you know, duties are the weirdest things ever. Cause you like, you know, they're, they're not, you, you just, you, I feel like for the most part, you just want to get it over with. Like, that's really yes. what it, you know, it's not a pleasurable process. It's like, no, let me get in and get out of here as fast as possible. How somebody turns it into a, a sexual thing. I have no idea, but what was weird. So let me tell you the couple of weird things in the 11 minutes that I watched this and we will link, uh, uh, we'll link this in our YouTube card. So if you guys are listening on a podcast or you're watching on Facebook, you have to go over to our YouTube channel. Um, he asked her to send a video of her doing it. And she said that she did. And she tried to make it as sexy as possible, which I don't know how like you what? do how you do that. How would you even make it? Oh, my God. No, no. Then. No. So then she said that she flew. He flew her out to wherever he was. And that when she got there, like there was peroxide in the bathroom. I get, yeah. And her co, I made the same face. Her co host made the same face. I guess that was like for a cleanup afterwards. I don't know. And oh, she, she no. said that she tried to do it, but she couldn't do it. Yeah, she got stage fright. Yep. A little stage fright. Which that does, stage fright does happen. Like, especially if you got to go in public places, like you try and go and you're like, oh no, you get a little stage fright happening. That, that I could, that, <laughs> no thanks um and then she said and then the other the other girl in the podcast somebody brought up you know golden showers going wee wee and the other girl in the podcast named like she sputtered off like five people that she let like pee on her i i don't what am i missing supposedly that's you? a thing too yeah well how is that a thing i i don't know like why why i don't get that at all i don't get here's a weird thing about and I, I don't this this is probably uh different for girls though but like we going wee wee is is the worst thing that you can have happen to you during during that uh activity you know like you ever oh i'm sure guys will be able to relate to this you have a little bit too much to drink you start fooling around and you're like oh i gotta go hold on i gotta we <laughs> gotta, gotta leave hold on. Yeah, because it's not, you don't want to be holding that in while you're, you know. No. Mm -mm. That's super uncomfortable. Oh, God. Try peeing with a boner, right? <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> it's a difficult <laughs> prospect. But I don't, I don't, I don't get this. So now what was kind of hilarious, though, is Odell Beckham, I guess the rumors got back to him because if somebody goes publicly in the media and says, hey, so-and-so likes to get, you know, Cleveland Browned. Uh, that stuff tends to kind of catch up to you. And so he put on Instagram, oh, God. he responded on Instagram saying, can't knock me off my pivot no matter what S-H-X-T-S thrown my way. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Good response. Yeah, I thought that was pretty clever. And then he was joking around with people and people have just been dropping like poo emojis all in his... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, his I think his girlfriend said on you and with a laughing thing. And he responded, no, me too. Well, S H X T S crazy. Oh my Can you not say shit on on Instagram? I don't even know. No, I don't think so. I don't know. I definitely don't think this episode's <laughs> getting monetized on YouTube. Though. No, I don't think so. No. I, might, I might have to say goodbye to the podcast stuff, too. Um, Bye. Yeah, so that's that. Um, I don't know. I like that he played. uh that he kind of like played it off. Do you think it's true? I don't think it's true. I don't know. Like I said, people are into weird things. Just Be not for us. Between between the, the the Maxwell stuff and Epstein stuff, like between the 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 hubris of those two hiding what they hid and the preacher guy hiding the fact that he likes to have pool boys bang his wife. And like this much to a much less degree and a lot more fun degree, like whether or not he likes to get dookied on. Like I I'm I'm more fat. Like I, I try and now I it's almost like become a game of like, who's really who's telling the truth here? Like who's lying and who's not lying? You know what so I mean? So you won't believe the duty. 
<laughs> right. I, yeah, but you I, believe the pastor. I the pastor I believe. That I believe. It's fucking weird too. That's it's weird, but I gotta look at her. My wife sent me an article. There was a whole article in the Times, I think, or the Post or something. Um, that was all about it was like all in I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but it was all in depth about this dude who just likes to have his we oh, was super weird about this one. It was his girlfriend. He likes to have his girlfriend with other men. And I thought that's super interesting because it's one thing. The wife is one thing because that's like a lifelong bond that you've agreed upon. A girlfriend, like girlfriends come and go like that's, you know, I, like I, I feel I, maybe I'm wrong with this, but I feel like, hey, I want somebody else to bang you is not something that you bring up within the first year or two or three years of knowing somebody. <laughs> I feel like that kind of forms over time, but, but I'm probably oh, wrong. The first about five that. minutes. OK, yeah, maybe I'm, you know. Do you put that in your match.com profile? Is that in the description right below your photos? I don't get it. Joy is cuckold. When you're on match, do you put a picture of yourself and then like the four dudes who you want to have bang the person that you eventually find? How does it work? Maybe. Jane? I just don't know. A lot of questions. I don't think we'll ever get the answers to. Yeah, so you can put taking a dump on your chest or underneath a glass table. Just as fascinating to me. Because <laughs> I hope he doesn't see this. Then, then like, you know, having somebody bang your significant other. I just don't never understand these things. But never. Hey, if that's your kink, God bless you. Go Good for, for it. You. Yeah. I'm glad you found something to uh, to uh, knock your socks off. Um. This looks like it's straight out of a movie. I, I thought this was fake when I saw it, but again, we'll put a link in the description. This is San Francisco this morning. Crazy, right? How insane. How insane is that? Let me make that bigger for everybody watching on YouTube. This is San Francisco this morning. This is all because of wildfires. If you're listening on the podcast, it is the most orangey pumpkin sky this is pumpkin spice San Francisco, by the way. This is <laughs> there you go. This is the most orangey sky I've ever. You can see people are walking. This hasn't been altered whatsoever. There's a hundred photos of this exact same thing. This is what people in San Francisco woke up to this morning. Wouldn't you panic and run for the like? What would you do if you woke up to this? Oh, it's 2020. Okay. I, you'd have to think the world that this is it. This is, by the way, can this even be healthy that you're breathing in like that? All this crap Probably is in the not. air. I cannot be good. No, you're not going to find a person in San Francisco not where even though even though I will refuse to wear even Janine would wear a mask in this. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, "Guess who loves masks now? I do." <laughs> <laughs> now I'll wear a mask. I'll even cover my nose. <laughs> uh, and finally, the uh, Kardashians are leaving. They make the announcement seven, eight, nine days before their new season is about to premiere on E. And they say they're not leaving this year, but next year, 20, uh, 2021, will be the 20th season of their show. And that's it. They're not going to do any more. Good. <laughs> Good riddance. I mean, come on. They've had a hell of a it's show about nothing. Yeah, they've had a hell. They they ran longer than Seinfeld, which at least was very. I was gonna say it's like right, it's Seinfeld. Yeah, the Kardashians were were by the way. I always people disagree with me. I the Kardashians are useful. Like we need the Kardashians in our lives, and I feel like once the Kardashians leave, we're just gonna get new Kardashians. It doesn't it doesn't even matter. There's an there's an office somewhere right now where Ryan Seacrest is not eating anything and barely drinking a veggie protein shake and thinking about who can we stick the cameras on next to carry the Eat Network. Right. Who is next? Who's going to be next? And he's probably drinking jizz shakes. You think he's drinking a jizz shake? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Going like this. I need a new coffee table in my office. You know what I'm saying? Get one of those nice glass ones you got. You, come here. <laughs> Sit on this table. <laughs> Hey, you want to go for Taco Bell today? Because I'm feeling a little randy for tomorrow. Oh, you know no. what I mean? <laughs> Is that a part of the process? Like, what do you like? Here's the thing. When I go to the bathroom, it's it's Russian roulette. I don't know what's coming out on the other end. <laughs> I don't know if it's oh, chocolate God. milk. I don't know if it's coal bricks. I, I don't know what is happening. Like when you're in that situation, you're running a big risk there. 
right? Because you don't know what's going to happen. No. At On coffee, either end. A coffee table is not a safe thing. No, it's not. I have to get that. You know, in the movie Avengers, where they where they lock Loki in that huge spherical thing with all the airlocks that I would feel OK in that watching somebody take a dump in that. <laughs> but a coffee oh, table, God, too much, too much runnage. You know, that could be bad. And, and you laying underneath it. Don't forget that part. Yeah. What's weird, though, is that seems like a like a like a goof. Like I could I could see like a. What do they call those? Like a fraternity doing that in like 1985. Like, yes. oh, this would be hilarious. Put put Chester underneath the thing, you know, before we all go let's off. Let's give him some Taco Bell, right? Yeah, let, let's let's watch him take a dump. Like, you know, it'll be hilarious. I, I just don't, don't know. That's weird. That's weird. <sighs> oh, life. I don't know. Um, but I think that the Kardashians, I think they'll. I th here's the thing, too. Social media has become such probably a more easier alternative for them to make money. You know what I mean? Like, why have somebody follow you around for days on end, hours on end of your day with a camera trying to fit this narrative in so that you can make a living off of a show when you can just put out a couple of Instagram posts, probably make just right. as much money and, not, and you can control the narrative so much more. You don't have to have that intrusion on your, li on your life. You Great. know, so when that's I, what they're probably going to do. When I first read this, though, I thought, oh, Kim's finally coming to our senses and, you know, going to take care of her husband, who's a wacko who severely needs help and not throw cameras in front of his face or worry about throwing cameras in front of her own face. And then I read, oh, no, no, they're still going to play this season and they're going to do a whole nother. And I was like, oh, forget it. Right. That's not it. Come on. You know. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But he's so. going to be president anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Somebody had a funny tweet. I wish I could give them credit for it, but uh, they were like, I wonder if Ray J is coming back for the finale because he crushed it in the pilot. Oh, snap. That's a good one. That is a good one. That is a good one. I actually wrote that tweet. <laughs> yeah, so question for the episode, and you can tweet us. You can put it in the YouTube or Facebook comments. Who do you think that is going to get the new show on E? Because I'm sure E is going to just slap another family into yeah. place. Um, we'll see. Maybe Cardi B. That would be interesting. Mm. It's going to be another desperate housewife show, whatever it's called. Yeah, probably. It's got to be somebody good, though. It's got to be somebody that you want to watch. You know, mm -hmm. that's as interesting and, and as magnetic as, as Kim Kardashian. But here's the thing. Like I know people who are like you think Kim Kardashian. I, people find Kim Kardashian interesting, and she is magnetic. The, the, we there wouldn't be twenty years of this crap if it wasn't for the <laughs> fact that whatever that X quality is about her, the fact that she did a porn or whatever it was, people want to know what's happening with her. Yeah, but so they have to be that interesting that you want to watch. But also, if you get too like interesting or too good at it, you're not going to be able to afford to have them. Exactly. So we'll see. Catching that lightning in a bottle like Seacrest did the first time around, which, by the way, a lot of people forget this, but it was the Osbournes that was doing so well on MTV and everybody was going out to try and get their own Osbournes and Seacrest just stumbled upon the Kardashians. Chris was shopping around the idea. She was trying to get the show. He kind of liked it. Yeah, he put it on and that was it. It just it just took off from there. So. I'm telling you, I, oh, I come we'll anywhere close to Kardashian money, Janine. You'll never see or hear from me ever again. And I'm <laughs> not just talking to the podcast audience. I'm talking to you and Frank and all of our friends and a large majority of my family, basically all of them. I was trying to be polite by saying a large majority, but I do mean all of them. I will be gone. <laughs> my wife and kids. <laughs> I'll bring them. Them, them I kind of like. I'm attached to them. Yeah, I got a thing for them. But other than them, I, I got nothing. I got. I'm out of here. Nobody will see Bye. or hear from me ever again. I'll be like Don. On Lewis. that note. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, make sure you go to AnthonyOnAir.com to get all our links and information. Rate and review on Apple Podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. Hit the bell to get notifications so that we do premiere a new episode. You're one of the first to see it and always throw a thumbs up because, you know, YouTube requires it. And so does Facebook. I don't know. 
I, I don't like begging for thumbs up, but they like it. So if you like the show, give that a thumbs up. And uh, that's it. We will see you on the next episode. Bye.